All right, this will be video two covering uh, Women, Fire, and Dangerous Things by George Lakoff, what categories reveal about the mind. Uh, chapter 12, um, what's wrong with objectivist metaphysics. And um, this is part two of that reading. Oops, I lose that, it's a different part. Okay, the species. According to evolutionary biology, species are not natural kinds in, technical obje in the technical objectivist sense, namely classical categories defined by common essential properties. In fact, species in evolutionary biology are not classical categories at all. Perhaps the best place to start is with the discussion of the various concepts of the species by Ernest Meyer, 1963-1984. As Meyer observes, the pre-evolutionary Linnaean view of a biological category did fit the objectivist picture. The typological species concept, going back to the philosophies of Plato and Aristotle, and thus sometimes called the essentialist concept, was the species concept of Linnaeus and his followers. Uh, and here Lakoff quotes Cain, 1958, for that claim. According to this concept, the observed diversity of the universe reflects the existence of a limited number of underlying quote-unquote, universals or types, the eidos of Plato, the presence of the same underlying essence is inferred from similarity, and morphological similarity is therefore the species criterion for the essentialist. Meyer, 1984. Pre-evolutionary Linnaean taxonomy is an instance of the classical theory of categories. It turned out not to be consistent with the theory of evolution. One main problem is variation. A species does not have a uniform internal structure, with all members sharing a given set of defined properties uniformly. Instead, there are subdivisions within a species defined by statistical correlations among a collection of properties. As David Hull puts it, after evolutionary theory was accepted, variation was acknowledged as the rule, not the exception. Instead of ignoring it, tax uh, taxonomists had to take variation into account by describing it statistically. No one specimen could be typical in any but a statistical sense. Species could no longer be viewed as homogeneous groups of individuals, but as polytypic groups, often with significant subdivisions. Polythetic definitions in terms of statistically co-varying properties replaced essentialist definitions. Hull, 1984, page 1, page 587. In this century, attempts have been made to define the concept of species in such a way that it would play an appropriate role in evolutionary theory. Though Hansky, and especially Meyer, developed what came to be called the biological species concept. It not only considers morphological similarities, but also takes into account the parameters of evolutionary theory. Reproduction, adaptation to ecological niches, gene pools, etc. According to this concept, then, the members of a species constitute one reproductive community. The individuals of a species of animals respond to one another as potential mates and seek one another for the purpose of reproduction. The species is also to an ecological unit that, regardless of the individuals composing it, interacts as a unit with other species with which it shares the environment. The species, finally, is three, a genetic unit consisting of a large intercommunicating gene pool where whereas an individual is merely a temporary vessel holding a small portion of the contents of the gene pool for a short period of time. The species definition that results from this theoretical species concept is species are groups of actually or potentially interbreeding populations which are reproductively isolated from other such groups. Meyer, 1984, page 533. Meyer correctly saw that such a concept of the species put evolutionary biology in conflict with a venerable and powerful philosophical tradition. Quoting Meyer again, The development of the biological concept of the species is one of the earliest manifestations of the emancipation of biology from an inappropriate philosophy based on the phenomena of inanimate nature. Meyer, 1984, page 533. The species characterized in this way is not a natural kind in a classical sense. In fact, it is not even a classical category. There are seven ways in which it fails to qualify as a natural kind of a classical sort, of, that is, of an objectivist sort. First, as we, say, as we saw above, species do not have a homogeneous structure with all members sharing defining properties. Only statistical correlations among properties can be given. As you know, I've been 
pointing out that we just have statistics. That's how you get knowledge from this, the fuzzy data. Seems obvious. Second, a biological species is defined not with respect to intrinsic properties, but only with relation to other groups. In a classical natural kind, the relevant properties are defined intrinsically with respect to each member, not relationally with respect to other groups. A population is a species with respect to all other populations with which it exhibits the relationship of reproductive isolation, non-interbreeding. If only a single population existed in the entire world, it would be meaningless to call it a species. Meyer, 1984, page 535. Third, a species is not defined in terms of properties of its individual members. For example, it is defined in terms of its gene pool, though no individual has anything more than a small portion of the genes in the pool. Classical categories, on the other hand, are always defined in terms of properties properties that each of the individual members has. Perhaps the most interesting ways in which species diverge from natural kinds as they were classically defined could be seen in Meyer's characterization of the kinds of situations that provide difficulties for fitting the biological species concept into traditional taxonomies. Such difficulties exist because the biological concept of the species is also defined relative to time and space. Time is involved because new species develop over time. Place is involved because adaptation to a particular geographical environment is crucial in evolutionary theory. Natural kinds, on the other hand, are defined only by properties of individual members and thus are constant across time and geographical areas. Factors involving time and space lead to further ways in which the biological concept of the species differs from classical natural kinds. Fourth, if one considers populations distributed over broad areas, there is not always a distinct point at which one can distinguish one species from two. Instead, there is often a gradation. Because the development of species is a gradual process and involves many factors, there are inevitably intermediate stages rather, at which a binary, same or different species distinction is impossible or meaningless. Meyer speaks of such cases as presenting quote-unquote difficulties for taxonomies. Quoting Meyer, More interesting to the evolutionist are the difficulties that are introduced when the dimensions of time and space are added. Most species of taxa do not consist merely of a single local population, but are an aggregate of numerous local populations that exchange genes with each other to a greater or lesser degree. The more distant two populations are from each other, the more likely they are to differ in a number of characteristics. I show elsewhere, Meyer 1963, chapter 10 and 11, that some of these populations are incipient species, having acquired some but not all characteristics of a species. One or another of the three most characteristic properties of species taxa, reproductive isolation, ecological difference, and morphological distinguishability, is in such cases only incompletely developed. The application of the species concept to such incompletely speciated populations raises considerable difficulty. Meyer, 1984, page, three, page 536. In other words, biological species show prototype effects. You have to read chapters 1 through uh, 11 to get know that, what he means by that. Populations that are best examples of the biological species concept have all three of these characteristics, but the biological world is sufficiently complex that a clear, same or different species judgment cannot be given in a great many cases. Myers suggests that the best way to think about the biological species in such difficult cases is not in terms of collections of individuals, but in terms of gene pools. A species, as he puts it, is a protected gene pool. The, mechanism of protection, the mechanisms of protection are relative to its habitat and to stages of evolutionary development. The following cases make sense in these terms, but provide further counter evidence to classical views of natural kinds. Fifth, the concept belongs to the name same species as is not transitive. On the classical theory of natural kinds, the relation belongs to the same natural kind as is transitive. If A and B are of the same kind, and B and C are of the same kind, then A and C are of the same kind. Meyer cites a class of cases well known in the biological community where transitivity fails. As he puts it, widespread species may have terminal populations that behave towards each other as distinct species, 
even though they are connected by a change of interbreeding populations, Meyer 1984, page 536. To put it another way, consider the following situation. There is a sequence of adjacent geographical areas and a population of organisms in each area. Let us call these populations A, B, C, D, and E. A can interbreed with B, B with C, C with D, and D with E, but A cannot interbreed with E. Are A and E the terminal populations of the change of the chain instances of the same species or not? In a chain of this sort, each adjacent pair of populations act like they are instances of the same species, but the relation is not transitive, since the terminal members A and E meet the conditions for being different species. Moreover, such chains can form rings where A and E coexist in the same habitat. For a discussion of such racial rings, see Stansfield, 1977, pages 438-39, and Dobzhansky, 1955, pages 184-185. to Looking globally at the entire situation, one cannot call these populations either the same species or different species. However, if one looks at the situation locally, one can speak of a protected gene pools in each environment. The classical notion of natural kind with its transitivity condition is defined globally. It must be defined globally since essential conditions cannot change from time to time and place to place. Such real populations of plants and animals in the world thus do not behave as classical natural kinds with respect to the biological concept of the species. Six, the biological species concept cannot be interpreted as having any absolutely necessary conditions. Okay, I'll, I'll start with six in a bit. I was going to go through all seven, but that's basically the rest of the chapter. So, um, so there you go. It's going to be one, two more. And I'll make comments on, on, on all these issues uh, when it's over, because I've already made comments on these in the past. I've already said my version of putting this stuff. But this is just uh, more well-referenced. Cheers.